Hi, it's Dean here from Showreel Mastery. Now, one of the things that we talk about quite a lot inside the course is of course the camera, because understanding the camera is one of the greatest things an actor can do by way of becoming a better screen actor. The camera is the, the main tool that we have as actors to express our performance. And if we can develop some knowledge, it allows us to really use that tool with much more precision. And it gives us greater control over our performance. And ultimately, we're able to do better work. Lenses have a profound impact on how an actor comes across on screen. Now in the course we look at a lot of different lenses, but essentially we divide them into kind of two types of lenses. Long lenses, which are also known as telephoto lenses, and short lenses. And we come to understand that it's the long lenses that tend to be more flattering for actors. And when I say flattering, you know, they, they make the human face more aesthetically appealing. Whereas it's the short lenses that tend to have a distorting effect on our face. And uh, we can think of this as, as, as unflattering. There's a lot of other nuance to what happens when you are, are on a wide lens. Movement, uh, especially movement down towards and away from the camera, is exaggerated. And so a move that on a long lens might just feel like a really small move can look enormous, like moving a mountain. And that doesn't just go, you know, go for sort of leaning back and forward movements, but movements of the mouth, the really subtle movements, movements of the eyes. Um, and so we find that um, when we are very close up on a wide lens, these, these very small movements become enormous. One of the, the fundamental things that's affected by the kind of lens is the size of the frame. So even though the camera is a long, long way away from you, if there is a telephoto lens on the camera, then you still might be in a very tight shot. And of course, uh, you know, you might find that, the, again, that the camera is, uh, you know, feels like it's fairly close, but there's a wide lens on the camera and in actual fact, you're seeing everything. You'll often find on sets actors checking in with someone in the camera department, what kind of lens are you on, okay? Actors who, who have these technical skills will say, you know, what lens are you on? And the, and the camera operator might say a 50 millimeter and they know instantly a 50 millimeter, you know, judging by the distance uh, the camera is, you know, it's gonna be this kind of shot, you know, 50 millimeter has this sort of sense of compression to it and they can scale their, their performance accordingly. That, you know, takes a bit of experience, but of course, um, learning about lenses is something that we can all do, you know, anytime. Another aspect of the camera that's, that's of course really important is the height of the camera. Now we look at this very uh, closely in the course and we look at what some of the characteristics are of a flattering cinematic close-up. And we often find that really nice flattering close-ups are just very, very slightly above the eye line of the actor. Very rarely are they below the eye line of the actor. So the height of the camera in relation to you and your performance, again, uh, has a huge impact on the way your performance comes across on camera. If the camera's below you, okay, that can be an awkward angle if it's kind of looking up your nose. The director might be doing that on purpose because of course every time we choose a shot and we choose a camera position, it is because we as a director are making a statement about a character. But of course, when a camera is, is lower than, than your eye line is, it, it, that can also have the effect of kind of empowering your character. You, of course, come across as taller, more domineering in the scene. And of course, the reverse is true. When we have a camera angle that's above us, it can be, it can feel belittling. Again, depending on what, what lens is used and how the shot has been created by the director. Something else we go into within the course is depth of field. Now depth of field is the term that describes how much of the focal plane actually is in focus. Okay, so on a very shallow depth of field, we might only have to move a fraction, maybe centimeters, in order for us to go out of focus. And in scenes like that, the focus puller has a lot of work to do because they're constantly adjusting the focus of the camera uh, in order to keep up with the actor. Whereas if we've got a really large depth of field, uh, then of course we've got more freedom of movement. So it can really pay as actors to understand uh, what depth of field is in play within the shot because we can really help the crew out and particularly the focus puller by 
if we're in a really shallow depth of field, keeping our movement to a minimum. And if we are going to move, to try and slow that movement down so the focus puller can keep up with it. And of course, the most important thing is that when we rehearse and we establish our movement, we keep that movement consistent from take to take so that we're not throwing any surprises at the focus puller. We don't risk that moment where we go out of focus and, and we've got to you know, do the, the whole take again. Um, some actors, you know, uh, you know, I think particularly actors who, who haven't spent a lot of time on sets would, would maybe find this a really severe limitation. Oh, what do you mean? I have to move exactly the same in each take. I have to give the same performance in each take. You, you can give a very different performance in different takes. You can really evolve and build on a performance across multiple takes while still giving the focus puller consistent movement. The, the world's best actors are always going to be offering the director something you know, slightly different, a modification from take to take, while still keeping their continuity and keeping their movement consistent for the sake of, of uh, focus. So of course, these are some of the issues that we go into in much greater detail uh, in Showreel Mastery. And of course, Showreel Mastery is a short course online in which actors can develop real filmmaking skills and of course come out with a professional looking showreel generally using tools that they probably already own. So if you're an actor who wants to learn more about the filmmaking process, maybe you want to pivot to become a content creator, maybe you just want to make a showreel that will open doors for your career, then Showreel Mastery is the place for you. And uh, I look forward to you enrolling and I would love to see you in class. We have a fantastic online community that's gathering real strength. We also offer uh, personalized coaching and group coaching as part of the course. And of course, we've got a huge amount of content about developing Developing filmmaking skills. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Showreel Mastery. I'll see you in class.